day which will be remembered as the coldest inauguration day in history as freezing temperatures and swirling winds forced the cancellation of many events and moved the actual inaugural ceremony inside under the protective ceiling of the Capitol Rotunda. Ronald Reagan took the oath of office and became the 50th President of the United States. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. Congratulations, sir. While this was a day of great joy for the first family, it was a day of disappointment for many Clevelanders who were looking forward to the once-in-a-lifetime chance to march in an inaugural parade. But as News Center 8's Tim Taylor and Denise DeCenso on special assignment in Washington report, this isn't the first time the weather has upset the best laid plans. Cold weather is nothing new to Inauguration Day here in our nation's capital. Back in 1873, the coldest inaugural until today, President Ulysses S. Grant watched as members of the Army and the Navy collapsed right on the street from the extreme cold. A howling wind created a wind chill of 25 below. In fact, the birds brought in to sing at the inaugural parties while they froze to death in their cages. This cold inaugural weather is also blamed for the death of the first president to die in office, William Henry. Harrison caught pneumonia while taking the oath of office. As 10 inches of snow piled up on these streets in 1909, President William Howard Taft said, I always knew it would be a cold day when I would be president. And back in 1961, a million people climbed over deep snow banks on these streets to watch the inaugural parade of John F. Kennedy. That's a lot of cold inaugural history, but never in this century has an inaugural parade been canceled until today. Well, I'm from Cleveland. I spent all my life in Cleveland, but I've really never experienced cold like this. This this is something else, and I, as I say, I agree with them 100%. Disappointment is nothing new to the Cleveland Police Mounted Unit. The last time they got the chance to strut their stuff for the nation was way back in 1953 for President Eisenhower. 20 years later, they were to ride for President Nixon, but they missed a pre-parade meeting and were cut from the lineup on Inauguration Day. For one policeman who's been sidelined twice, it's been a pretty frustrating experience. I think the only way I'm going to get in a parade up here is I'm going to have to be cremated and they're going to have to spread my ashes over the parade route. As this year's riders fed their trusty partners this morning, they admitted that neither man nor beast could have withstood these sub-zero temperatures. But it is tough to return home without that ride down Pennsylvania Avenue. I would like to say to the people of Cleveland, if they would have seen us on television, they would have been so proud of us. The horsemen and women of the Medina County Sheriff's Department share that pride, and in fact, they're looking forward to inauguration 1989. I do it over again, uh, and I'd like to come back in four years. I'm glad to be here. I couldn't, you know, ask for, this is a one-in-a-lifetime experience. And that is exactly how the Brunswick High School Band feels. The Marching Blue Devils raised over $35,000 to get here. These young men and women are disappointed, but at the same time, a little relieved. Chris, we're going to try a little experiment now. They say it's too cold to march, too cold to play. How about showing us what you'd face today had you marched? Well, the valves are stuck, and all you can get is a... And it kind of sticks to your lips a little bit, too. You can only get one note. And what, what is that note? Uh, it'd be a B-flat on the tuba. Can we hear it? Uh, can't even get anything out. Although the parade was canceled, the band hoped to capture a piece of today's historic event and gathered at the site where they would have played for the president. Incredibly, at that very same moment, the presidential motorcade roared by and the screaming students and their parents got a personal wave from the president himself. The kids in the Brunswick Band and the Cleveland and Medina Mounted Units came here to make history. And you know what? They did. They may not have marched in the inaugural parade, but they can tell their grandchildren that they were part of the first and, who knows, maybe the only inaugural parade to be canceled in this century. I'm Denise DeCenzo. And I'm Tim Taylor, News Center 8, Washington. We'll be talking with Tim and Denise live about today's icy inauguration. That comes up in a few minutes. But coming up next in sports, conversations with winners and losers from Palo Alto.